57, I work at VentureFact. We help businesses execute on software projects and build remote software teams. But uh, they invited me here today to talk to you all about uh, building relationships. And so I want to talk about five things. So uh, why should we build relationships? Why does this even matter? Second, uh, leading with generosity. Then I'm going to talk a bit about networking events. And then the last two things will be building a mentor network and building a peer network. So to start off, why should we build relationships? Why does this even matter? And really, if you think about any role that you will have in the future, or anything that you're doing today, you're always going to do thing, uh, you're going to do something as part of a team or with other people. So if you're a freelancer, you're going to work with a client. If you're if you're an employee, you have a, you have a manager, you have a team, and you might have people that work under you. And so everything is going to be done with and through other people. So if you know how to build great relationships. Then you, can, then you can do that better. Uh, and so uh, why, why should you network? Because that's, uh, why should you build relationships? Because that, uh, you're always gonna be working with people and you're always gonna have to build relationships. So how do you build relationships? And the key is to lead with generosity. And this is something that Adam Grant, who's a, a professor actually at Wharton, that uh, brings forward the whole concept of give and take and lead, with, lead by giving. And Keith Ferrazzi also has that same statement of uh, lead with generosity. So definitely recommend reading those books by Adam Grant on give and take, and by Keith Ferrazzi on uh, you know never eat alone, and, and who's got your back. But talk in more detail about this concept of lead with generosity. Um, but just as an example, the, the idea of leading with generosity is when you first meet someone, your goal and the only thing you're thinking about is how can I help that person? What questions do I have? What what challenges do they have? And just kind of learn about those challenges, and you see, uh, and you kind of you're you're kind of thinking. Can I brainstorm with this person to think about a solution? Do I have experience that's relevant to this person that's gonna help them solve that problem? Or are there people I know that can better direct them and better and help them out? So I can give you a great example. Um, so a couple of years ago, we a friend of a friend was moving to New York, and I got introduced to her. You know, the, she wanted to meet people in New York City, she's never been there, and she wanted to look for a job. And I met up with her because I was introduced to her, and I you know, then said, okay, cool, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I thought she was brilliant, so I introduced her to a couple of friends, and I introduced her to a couple of companies to help her kind of get started when she moves to a new city, when she's moving to a new city. Um, and that worked out very well. Uh, but then after, after two years, like, we didn't speak as much. Uh, then after two years, she kind of comes, uh, she, she kind of is now looking for a new job, and we meet up again. At that time, we were actually hiring for the specific role that she has experience in. And it was a lot easier for us to convince her to join the company. <coughs> it was a lot easier for us to convince her to join the company, uh, given that we had built a relationship and had been helpful early on. And so that you know saved us a lot of time and energy and search costs, able to find someone who fit in really well culturally, had, we had already met with, and we had a lot of experience. Kind of, uh, uh, we had already seen her on, a, on, a, on multiple occasions. So that's an example of how that helps. But I do want to qualify that with, whenever you leave with generosity, you don't want to think that I am helping this person because in the future I expect them to pay me back or uh, expect them to help me. Um, that kind of will, uh, will, be, will, will be very demoralizing because most of the time it's, you know, it's not kind of like I help this person out and then after two weeks he's gonna help me out. Or it's more like I'm helping them because I want to and I enjoy helping them. So it's a very different perspective uh, that you should have when you help out other people. Uh, so the next thing I want to talk about is networking events. So when you go to a networking event, you're going to meet, uh, there's going to be a lot of people at the event, and there's uh, different things that people try to optimize for. Some people try to optimize for the quantity of relationships. Some people try to optimize for the quality of relationships. Some people try to optimize for the number of business cards that they can get. Um, in reality, though, if all you have is a person's name, and a, you speak to them for one minute, and you get a bit, some info about them, um, that's going to be that's not going to be that meaningful of a relationship, right? If I know your name and uh, a sentence about you, I can get that on Twitter. So us meeting in person doesn't really make that big of a difference, right? Whereas if you speak with someone and you have a deeper conversation, you talk about the specific challenges they're facing, specific things, uh, sp specific things in their life, and you have a 10, 15, 20 minute conversation with them, now you have some depth, now you have some context, something that you can talk to the other person about, and there's more of a relationship in the future that you can fall back on. So that's a much deeper relationship and it's more meaningful. Um, and the next thing is, of course, you wanna get, you get their business card and most people don't follow up. 
The reason they don't follow up is because if you go to a networking event, you spend two days at this conference, and you're now two days behind on work. Uh, you have two days worth of emails that have come through, two days worth of work that you wanted to do that you didn't do. Uh, and so the last thing on your mind is, I need to follow up with all those people that I met with. Uh, but in reality, if you don't follow up with them, then the whole point of you going to that event is meaningless because if you were going to build relationships and meet people and you never follow up with them, then you're, you didn't build any relationships. Uh, no one knows who you are. Everyone's going to forget you and you will forget them. Right? Everyone's meeting so many people every day. The people that you speak with for a long time and that you keep in contact with are the people that you're actually going to build a relationship with. So follow up is one thing that I would say probably over 90% of people do not do. Uh, which completely uh, mean, which completely kind of over, you know, it doesn't mean anything to, to network when you don't follow up. Okay, so now building a mentor and peer network. So these are two things that I feel very, very strongly about, and I think can completely change, uh, you know, your, your business and your outlook as you as you grow your career. So uh, what what is what does building a mentor network mean? A mentor network is basically building a group of people that that are seasoned, that are, that are old, generally older than you are that have more experience that you do, that have done what you would like to do and what you would like to accomplish, uh, and that can give you advice. So the, the, the mentors are people who, who, who you feel that will care about you, who want you to succeed, and who uh, will, um, who will give time, usually once a month or once a quarter, to, to just talk to you about what you're doing. And that is super powerful because a mentor network, well, when you just, you meet, you sometimes, you know, mentor network, it's hard to meet at once. Usually you meet with them individually. Uh, unless you have a board where you'll meet with them as a group. But you'll meet with them and they'll help give you like a much higher level of, of vision of like what are you actually working on? What are the problems you're, you, you, you're facing? And they're going to be, uh, they're going to be people who help take you out of the daily grind. When you're in a company, especially in a startup environment, where, where you, you're just in this daily grind. And this happens even outside of being an entrepreneur, even as, a, as an employee in most companies. And you're seeing this daily grind, and you lose perspective of the bigger picture. A mentor just asks you like high-level questions and helps you critique what you do on a daily basis, uh, and can give you answers to questions that you usually um, either don't even ask. You don't even ask those questions, uh, or uh, or give you give you a different perspective. So you always want to speak with mentors. And yes, they've run. Usually, they've run their businesses 10, 20 years ago. So it's not a hundred percent parallel because the world has changed in the last 10, 20 years. But there's always insights around you know, hiring and people operations and, uh, and uh, marketing that, that are always valuable. So you just want to listen to them, listen to their anecdotes, listen to their stories, and, and take out value. And the last thing is peer networks, building a peer network. A peer network is basically a group of people that are in your shoes, in your shoes. They might not be in the same industry, but they're in the same type of situation. If you're a founder, they're a founder. If you're a, if you're a mid-level manager, they're a mid-level manager. If you're a senior exec, they're a senior exec. And you have a group of people, usually this is done together, uh, you, you, meet, you meet as one group. And this is where you share very openly uh, what's going on in your life, in your, in your business, uh, and you can speak about anything. Usually you don't want this to be, it's actually really, it, you don't want this to be your customers, your suppliers, your business partners. You want this to be people who you trust, people who are close friends, and people who you can be very honest with, right? So if it's a customer, it's a little more complicated. So you want to have everyone be, uh, be, be kind of pretty, uh, you know, pretty, everyone can be really open because that's, uh, there's, no, there's no constraints. And again, the industry is not that, as relevant, right? So you could be in, in technology and they could be in, um, in you know, fashion or you know, media or something else. But as long as the, 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 there's a lot of uh, similarities uh, between roles, uh, just if you're kind of in the same situation. Um, and so I can give you an example of how peer network was useful. When we, um, so I was meeting with a group of people that I, uh, I respect and we have this peer network and I was talking to them like, what are you guys currently working on? And at that time we were hiring our first salesperson. So we hadn't hired a salesperson before and it just so happened that another person on the team had just finished hiring their first salesperson and had done a lot of research on screening and hiring and uh, how the whole process of, of um, hiring salespeople. So they were able to just pass that all along, saved us a lot of time and energy. And there's a lot of interesting takeaways that they had, uh, that they, had they, they were able to provide for us just in, uh, you know, in a, you know, we spoke for like half an hour and we got all these answers from what they had done, what they had spent 
hours of research and meeting with different people to get that in information. So the value of the peer network is very, and a lot of it is, is huge. And a lot of the times you'll be in, in a setting and when you're, especially again for, for entrepreneurs, it's a very kind of lonely environment because you are, uh, you're, you're kind of responsible for employees, uh, if you have investors, your investors, if you have customers, supplier relationships, um, and then all these other parts of the business. So it's kind of a very tough situation to be in. And you think that a lot of the problems that you face are you know, only problems that you face and other people don't have any problems. Whereas when you sit at a table and you realize that a lot of the problems, even though they're in different industries, your peer network have these same problems. Um, so don't, uh, and that gives you a lot of, uh, you wanna kind of, you're able to think through the problems together and see how they think about it, see how they face those challenges, see how they interpret them and, and look at them. So I think there's a lot in uh, optimizing your, uh, your peer network and mentor network that add a lot of value uh, in the future. So uh, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about today and hope, hope you guys found some value in it. Um, 